The Powerball jackpot is now at $1.4 billion after no one matched all numbers in Wednesday's night, Wednesday night's drawings. All right, the anticipation is just building here. The drawing did produce a high number of tickets matching the five white balls, but not that elusive Powerball with 10 tickets each worth at at least a million dollars. I take that, oh, honestly. For sure. <laughs> The next Powerball is tonight. I know we have a pool here. Yep. And I think it's like after cash out and everything, yeah. there's like I think over 60 of us in this yeah. pool. Mm -hmm. I think we'd get at least like 10 to 12 million each if we win. Uh, yeah, you? that sounds pretty good. Yeah. Right. And our uh, guy organizing it, Chris, he's really our bookie. dedicated. <laughs> <laughs> and he's guy. got Excel. He's got Excel guy. Yeah, he's really putting that all together. And he sends us he's emails dedicated. with all the like. <laughs> thank you, Chris, for printouts of our tickets. Helping us yeah. become millionaires. <laughs> okay, we'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. Taking a look at live cam on your Saturday morning. Things looking great out there. We're getting ready for what's going to be a great weather weekend. Sarah Spivey standing by with the forecast. Good morning. It is Saturday, October 7th. RJ, thank you so much for joining us this yeah, weekend. Yeah, I love hanging out with the Sarah squad. Yeah, I'll be with you all today and tomorrow. You're in, you guys are back tomorrow, right? Yes. Well, should well, I just not show? Unless we win the Powerball. Oh, unless we win the Powerball because we're in a big pool here at work. Yes. <laughs> Literally, like... So plans to be back I here I don't tomorrow. know. It's like... Buying a yeah. Powerball, it's like three dollars. Right? Yeah. Like I'll cash app at you three dollars, yeah. but I'm like, how many times have I cash app three dollars for this? So how much yeah. money have I actually That's invested? Yeah, yeah. But uh, hopefully, we'll see. Hopefully. hopefully, someone has good luck. We did win the weather lottery, though. We I think definitely, we absolutely did. did. Way to go, RJ. That is a great tie-in. Yes, the weather feels great outside. So much so, we've got a, a, a meteorologist chat with other meteorologists here at KSAT, and they have been texting me. Oh, it feels great. It feels amazing. Yes, it does. Temperatures are only in the 60s out there. One thing that is a little unfortunate is we're still dealing with the molds from Thursday's rain. So mold Mold is very high in today's pollen count, but ragweed, fall elm, and pigweed are all low. Now let's get back to the good news. It feels amazing out there. A little cloudy, 66 degrees. Dew points are falling. Dew points are in the 40s. That's pretty dry. You can feel the lack of humidity out there. Winds are also picking up from the northeast at about 15 miles per hour. We've seen a few wind gusts of 20, 25 miles per hour. Take a look at current winds right now. Winds from the northeast in Rock Springs at 30. 13 miles per hour, sustained at 16 miles per hour in New Braunfels. As we zoom in a little bit more, winds from the north in Castroville at 12 miles per hour, all bringing in that drier air and keeping temperatures pretty steady this morning. It's 66 in San Antonio, 64 in Bolverde, 67 in New Braunfels, 67 in Hondo, and 62 in Bandera. It's going to be a great day all across South Central Texas. Take your kids to the park, take your pups to the park. At Enchanted Rock, it's going to be 72 for the high. It's only going to get up to 80 degrees at Guadalupe River State Natural Area and Government Canyon, only 75 at Hill Country State Natural Area. And the high temperature today in San Antonio, only 80 degrees. Breezy and nice with low humidity. Take a look at that morning low tomorrow in the 50s to start the day. I'll be showing you neighborhood lows coming up in the full forecast. And another beautiful day tomorrow at 80 degrees. We'll also talk briefly about rain chances next week. RJ. All right, thank you very much, Sarah. But of course, if you are headed out today, there's some road construction and changes you need to know about along Loop 1604, and all of this will once again cause a headache for drivers this weekend. It kind of will. So there'll be several closures along the corridor as part of the North Expansion Project. Our Stephen Cavazos breaks down what drivers need to know. As we drive off into the weekend, expect to see more closures in and around the Alamo City. And one of the busiest spots, of course, is the Loop 1604 North Expansion Project. Take a look at this aerial video that has shown the progress over the last few months. Now, I know if you travel through there, it could be pretty agitating having to sit through a lot of the congestion. But remember, the goal here is to reduce that congestion by expanding to more lanes. And we're going to see those closures in place for a little while. So remember, Loop 1604 North Expansion Project is expected to last several years. And yes, I did say years. 
years. We do have three segments that are under construction. So segment three actually stretches from I-10 all the way to 281. So let's go ahead and show you what you can expect out there. We have that full closure expected to take us all the way through Monday, October 9th. Now this work starts at nine in the evening, should finish at five in the morning. We'll see the closure along the Loop 1604 eastbound main lanes. That's from Jan Vance Jackson Road to exit ramp to the Lock Hill Selma Road entrance ramp. Be sure to follow those detours out there, folks. There will be more closures happening around that project as we see here at Lock Hill Selma Road at the Loop 1604 intersection. Now that work begins around the same time, nine at night and should finish at five in the morning. But remember, this takes us all the way up to Monday, October 9th. There will be off duty officers out there, so just make sure to follow the detours are going to help with the congestion that they may see and that you may encounter. But you can scan this QR code that takes you to our case at traffic page. We have a full article that breaks down the loop 1604 North expansion project. What you can expect over the next few years. So just make sure to plan your commute ahead of time. Thank you very much, Stephen. Police in Pleasanton have arrested a 46 year old man after a hit and run that killed a 17 year old girl early yesterday morning. This happened just after midnight on Thursday. The 17 year old victim was walking on Humble Camp Road near South Main Street when she was hit. Authorities say that they identified Torres Garcia after he later went back to the scene. He's being charged with failure to stop and render aid resulting in death. The name of the teen killed here has not been released. And another student at Hayes CISD has died after a possible fentanyl overdose. This makes the seventh student to die in the district. In a letter to parents, the district superintendent says the 15 year old girl died at her home just south of Austin. He says the Hayes County Sheriff's Office is working to confirm if it if fentanyl was actually involved. The superintendent says six students have died from fentanyl overdoses since last summer. Several changes have been made to keep students safe, including having Narcan at all 26 school campuses. In San Antonio police, they are asking for your help in locating a 69 year old endangered missing person. So Irene Edler was last seen on the 2300 block of Newark Park wearing a yellow shirt, white shorts and white tennis shoes. She has wavy and she has wavy mid back length white and silver hair. You can see her right there on your screen with brown eyes. If you have seen or have any information about where she may be, you're asked to contact the San Antonio Police Department's missing person unit. That number on your screen at the bottom, 210-207-7660. A developing story overseas in your morning headlines. Militants from Hamas launched a surprise attack from Gaza, killing at least 40 people and leaving more than 100 people injured. Israel now saying that they are at war. The assault began with a rocket barrage early this morning. Shortly afterwards, the Palestinian militant group Hamas claimed responsibility for the attack, calling for a general uprising against Israel. Israel's military has since announced a state of war alert, along with a new operation called Swords of Iron meant to target Hamas. Israelis who live near Gaza have been warned to stay in their homes. The Washington DC Board of, Dir board of Elections says hackers may have accessed hundreds of thousands of lines of voter data. So the board says it first learned Thursday that a hacking group claimed to have breached its records. So the board brought in the FBI and the Department of Homeland Security to help with this investigation. Voting records were reportedly accessed through the website hosting provider used by the agency. So officials took that website down as a precaution. Well, we've all heard of long COVID, but now a new study shows that long cold can also affect people. The study was released yesterday through a UK clinical medicine journal. Researchers surveyed more than 10,000 people. They found respiratory infections may continue to affect people who believe that they are recovered. However, researchers still can't say how long a long cold could last in comparison with long COVID. But the study said hopefully the new findings will motivate further work into those understandings, diagnosis, and treatment of syndromes after an infection. Now to my favorite topic, Sarah Spivey, aliens. We're talking about aliens here. So if you're giving up on the Powerball, Ring Doorbell is offering $1 million to anyone who catches an alien on their Ring Doorbell camera because aliens do exist, right, Sarah? Ring says whether it's a video of an extraterrestrial walking up your driveway 
or a UFO delivering your package. The company wants to see your footage. Oh my gosh, this video right now. <laughs> Ring says if you don't catch a real alien, you could still dress up like one to win other prizes. This video we're taking, I love it so much. The contest ends on November 3rd, so now's your time for the alien to show up. So let's hope it's at your front door. Have you seen the yes. video of what looks like Dobby, the house elf from Harry Potter? I have not seen this, no. Okay, we're gonna to Google it. Out. And, it's, and you're like, is this yeah. fake? Was it in a ring camera? Is I, that what? I think so. And <laughs> okay. it was, I was like, yeah. what is this? Maybe the alien and the homeowner can split the million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> kind of going Sarah, I need you to dress up like an alien and like deliver a package. It is spooky season. <laughs> spooky season. She, she, she's the real friend. She's going to do it for me. Okay, 910, 66 degrees. Yeah, and taking a look outside with live cam. All right, we're seeing the sun come up on a beautiful Saturday morning. All right, things looking good out there. We're going to check in with Sarah. See the latest with the forecast coming up. Hi. Hey. hey. <laughs> I was just excited because I got a picture in from mm -hmm. this morning's sunrise. It looks amazing. I want to show oh. it off. I can see Take it there. Off. It looks beautiful. Yeah. A gorgeous view there of the sunrise this morning. And then I got to thinking, you know what? Mm -hmm. It finally feels like fall. Why Love not it. go to a pumpkin patch? Yes. Yeah, it is so your pumpkin patch, patch forecast for the day calls for temperatures in the 70s. It's not until 5 p.m. that will mm -hmm. maybe reach 80 degrees. And winds will be from the north at 10 to 20, so a little breezy. And if you're curious, where is a pumpkin patch? Well, right now we've got a pumpkin patch map on <laughs> ksat.com. Just got to scan that QR code right there. It'll take you to the pumpkin patch map. Yeah, it's finally fall. We can feel like fall outside. We can take those pictures. 66 degrees outside. And by the way, for all my photographer friends out there, mostly cloudy skies. So great diffuse lighting out there too. Northeast winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. We've got gusts up to 20 right now. It's 62 in Kerrville, 59 in Rock Springs, 72 in Del Rio, 67 in New Braunfels, 66 in Gonzales, and 71 in Pleasanton. There's those clouds streaming in from the south and from the west, even though the winds are moving in from the north here. We've got a parent low out there in New England. That's what's bringing them rain, but bringing us the nice cooler weather across Texas, reinforcing shock of cooler air with that cold front. It's 50 degrees in Amarillo and Lubbock, 59 in Dallas. We're not going to get down into the 40s, but we will get down into the 50s tomorrow morning. More on that in just a bit. But again, drier air moving in from the north just to allow us to have a gorgeous day, not only today, but a gorgeous day tomorrow too. So all in all, a great weekend. A little breezy out there this morning with those winds from the north at about 15 miles per hour. We'll see a few gusts up to 30 miles per hour until about noon. And then by the evening, our winds are really going to start to die down. So the winds will be an issue this morning, not so much later on today. And you can see that in our case at 12 hour forecast. 68 degrees here at 10, northeast winds at 15. By noon, we're going to be at 73 uh, with again northeast winds at 10 to 15 miles per hour. In the afternoon, 80 degrees for the high around San Antonio, but there will be plenty of locations that do not get out of the 70s. And notice how those winds really do start to die down later on tonight. So if you have any plans to maybe uh, go to one of our local football games this evening, know that temperatures are going to be sliding into the 60s by midnight. So it is going to be a pleasant, cooler evening for us with less wind too. Here's a look at neighborhood highs. 83 in Del Rio, 78 in Hondo, Canyon Lake you'll be at 77, 79 in Catula, 80 in Rock Springs, 80 here in San Antonio. As we zoom in a little bit closer to the metro area, 75 though in Bol uh, Bernie and 76 in Bulverde, 78 in New Braunfels and Seguin, 78 in Divine and 77 in Hondo. Here's a look at tomorrow morning's lows. Again, it is going to, if you thought this morning was crisp and cool, tomorrow morning is going to be even cooler. We're going to be waking up in the mid to upper 50s around San Antonio, Converse area 55, low 50s, New Braunfels and Seguin. Outside of the city center, it's going to be cooler, 53 in New Braunfels and Seguin, and even 50 degrees in Bernie, Kerrville, and Comfort. I don't know about you, but I need a light jacket when temperatures get down into the mid 50s.
I know, I'm from Texas. 80 degrees tomorrow for the high. Monday morning will be nice and cool too at 58. 83 on Monday. And Tuesday, it will be humid. We'll have a 30% chance for a few showers. By Thursday, 90 degrees for the high temperature. So warming up, it's not out of the ordinary to see 90. But then a front arrives before it can get too warm Thursday night into Friday. Not only will that allow us to have a pleasant weekend next weekend, but hopefully skies will be clear for the ring of fire annular eclipse Saturday morning. This time next week, all eyes are going to be in the skies. I'm excited. Yeah, me too. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> and I like how you said that. Anything to just get the sweater out, just to kind of get a little bit of a feel of fall. I might just yeah. bring a light card again to work tomorrow. Like, mm, cold, guys. A party card. There you <laughs> there go. You go. <laughs> party, party. Okay. Not a party without a cardi. No, definitely not. Uh, 918 <laughs> out there and 66 degrees, excuse me, out there right now. Ooh, that looks like a party. Today go. on Texas Eats, David Elder headed to Dallas to check out the wild food at the State Fair of Texas. We have a preview coming up. She don't care about the business, we, and we fire her. And we all, all right, the owner of an Asian buffet taking swift action after his business failed a recent health inspection. We'll tell you about the other improvements that he's making coming up behind their kitchen door. King's Cafe, located in the 7800 block of I-35 South, got a failing score of 68 on their August health inspection. That's three points lower than the score they got earlier this year when they were first featured on BKD. Food kept at improper temps had to be thrown out. Fly traps were found above a food prep area while a metal tray was found stacked on top of ready to eat meat. An employee cooking meats couldn't answer the inspector's questions about food temperatures. The interior of the ice machine had a buildup of black and yellow residue. They were told to remove all dead pests and show proof of pest control receipts. They were also told to stop using old cans to store food items. Several violations were repeats. It had been several weeks since the failed inspection, so I stopped by this week to see if the business had made any improvement. Owner Ricky Liu says he's disappointed by the low scores, pinning much of the blame on a former manager he let go. She don't care about the business, we, and we fire her. And we also and talk to the inspector Rose. Okay. She she will check it. She come back, respect it again. She say everything okay. Lou says he's hired a new manager and has taken a more hands-on role with the business. He says they're getting monthly pest control services and hopes to have a higher score at their next inspection. <laughs> Beijing Express, located in the 8,000 block of Marbach, has been featured on BKD multiple times, most recently this past March when they had a 70. They improved a few points up to a 76 on their August inspection. All of the food in a cold hold unit was too warm. None of the employees washed their hands during the inspection. All of the equipment needed to be clean, top to bottom, and the entire business was in need of a good cleaning. A side door was found left open, and we also found a door wide open when we stopped by. I tried to ask some questions. This employee at the front desk said she would get a manager, but a few minutes later asked us to leave. Do you want to, will somebody talk to me about your scores? No. According to health department records, the last time the business had a score above 80 was way back in September of 2019 when they got an 82. For Behind the Kitchen Door, Tim Gerber, KSAT 12 News. All right, it is 924 outside right now. Well, like, why do you keep on saying 924? <laughs> Maybe I'm just it's, thinking about I'm being outside. You are so excited. I am just thinking about being outdoors. Guys, it's 60, 67 it's degrees. It's 67 degrees. Yeah. <laughs> okay, it's fair season. Look at that. David Elder has a look at some of the cool wild food from the Texas State Fair. That's up next. This is Bernie's Pride, cherry pie in the sky. Look at the beautiful inside on there. You can see the fruit, you can see the, all that fried goodness in there as Two well. Two types of cherries, and then a little cherry juice and the cherry on top with whipped cream. The bluebell cools it down. All right, cheers to you. Cheers. Cheers. This is incredible. There's a reason why celebrities come out here. Oprah's been out here. When you come out to the State Fair, you gotta come and enjoy a funnel cake from Bernie's. 
Y'all, this looks so mm, good. Yeah. Cherry pie, when people ask me, like, what's your favorite, like, Thanksgiving cherry mm -hmm. pie? Yeah. Mm. Okay, I like that, yeah. And David Love Elder is just living the dream, just going up and down, 35, the state pair of Texas. Tasting yeah. all the good food, <laughs> not having to wait in the lines. Jealous, David. Good, good deal there. Okay, guys, it's 928 right now and uh, 67 degrees outside. Okay, as we head to break, we wanted to give you a quick live look into the 8th Annual Monarch Butterfly and Pollinator Festival. This is happening now at Brackenridge Park. Our photographer, Alexis, is the one. Thank you, Alexis, giving us this live look there. So if you want to enjoy the cooler weather while celebrating the importance of our mm -hmm. ecosystem and our pollinators and keeping everything balanced, head over to this free event that's happening now until 1 p.m. And after the break, we'll take a closer look at all these amazing, oh, look at that dad. Yeah. Good dad. <laughs> we'll be right back. Good morning. It's 932 on this beautiful Saturday morning, October 7th. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, we're having a deep discussion about pies. I know. So <laughs> Our I favorite said, pies. We're all hungry. I we just want to be I outside. I love cherry pie. Yeah. Okay. You said not so and much. It's not high up on my pie meter. Apple pie, uh, pumpkin pie, of course, now that we are in pumpkin pie season. Sarah, Definitely you said you like calm. pear pie with what? <laughs> with a slice of cheddar cheese. Mm. Is the it's cheddar so melted? Good. You can melt it, but kind of think about it like a charcuterie. I'm saying, okay? a, a, a like you can warm up the pie, delicious. yeah, and then put uh, just a slice of cheddar and on it. And it gets, it doesn't get melty. It's just like, yes, it's it so sweats. Good. It's so good. But if I'm if I'm going for pie, I'm going for apple pie. Okay, Agree. That's my, that's Agree my, with that. <laughs> That's my go-to. All right, we're talking about Thanksgiving <laughs> foods because it feels like fall outside, all right? It is 66 degrees in the Alamo City, 61 in Bernie, 63 in Verde, 67 in Hondo. You can see I put the clouds on here, too. We've got mostly cloudy skies, and we're going to continue to see mostly cloudy skies throughout the day today. That's going to keep our temperatures down, as well as the fact that we're seeing drier air move in from the north. A cool front pushed through today, this morning, a reinforcing shot of cooler air. We've got wind gusts of up to 23 miles per hour in Hondo, 21 miles per hour in San Antonio, and it's going to be breezy for the first part of the day here. Only 73 at noon. The afternoon will be looking at 80 for the high temperature today in San Antonio, but many locations will stay in the 70s and winds will come down too. By the evening, our winds are only going to be from the northeast at about five miles per hour. It's going to be a great evening outdoors for any Saturday night plans, maybe even just pack a light sweater or cardigan too. One thing to keep in mind though is that molds are very high today. They're past 12,000. Molds are still elevated from the rain that we saw on Thursday. Ragweed, fall elm, and pigweed are present in low amounts. One week from today, seven days away from the ring of fire solar eclipse that will be moving through San Antonio as the moon moves in front of the sun but appears smaller than the sun. A ring of fire will appear around the sun. You will need those special glasses to look at the sun safely or a pinhole projector. And I made pinhole projectors on YouTube and on KSAT.com. You can see how to make those with your kids or even just you yourselves. It's, it's going to be a fun uh, thing to have both the uh, glasses and the pinhole projector. Coming up in the forecast, we're going to talk about a small chance for rain in the week ahead and a cool and even chilly start tomorrow for some. Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Two SAPD officers are getting another chance to prove they're innocent. This all comes after they were seen kicking down a man's door and then allegedly beating him. So yesterday, a judge allowed a mistrial for Carlos Castro and Thomas Villar. They are both charged for aggravated assault. Their defense attorney says he asked for a mistrial after he heard several witnesses say it was fair for the two officers to assault the victim. And you're trying and defending police officers for a use of force case. The fact that the state's own witnesses believe that it was reasonable is pretty important information. And the district attorney's office released a statement after yesterday's mistrial saying, in part, they will continue to prosecute. The city says both former officers are suspended. They are appealing, but SAPD says no date has been set. 
Taking a look at some morning headlines, affording a home is now at its lowest in decades. Finance company Freddie Mac says U.S. mortgage rates are up 7.49% just this week. And that's actually up from last week's 7.31%. Freddie Mac's chief economist says the jump is due to several factors, including shifts in inflation and the job market. The central bank has indicated it may keep rates higher for longer due to stubborn inflation. A new report by Moody's Analytics says a growing number of retirees are choosing to spend their golden years in Austin. So between 2010 and 2020, the population of adults over 64 years has doubled. Austin has been shown to also have a lower cost of living compared to bigger cities, a.k.a. anyone from California, because Austin still isn't cheap. Other U.S. cities are gaining popularity amongst older adults, include Houston, Atlanta, Raleigh, North Carolina, Boise, Idaho. All right, and another showing of data doubling here. The number of Latinos with advanced degrees more than doubled in the last 20 years. That's according to a new analysis by the Pew Research Center using data from the Census Bureau and the 2021 American Community Survey. The study found that nearly 2.5 million Latinos held advanced degrees in 2021, and that is compared to just 710,000 back in 2000. The study also found that Latinos saw the fastest growth in advanced degrees of any major group. That includes a 291% increase of Hispanic women holding an advanced degree and a 199% increase for Hispanic men. Okay, we showed you a little bit ago the 8th Annual Monarch Butterfly and Pollinator Festival happening now at Brackenridge Park. All right, you've done a lot of work with the Monarchs. Yeah. And a lot of different stories on that. I'll be going to this right after the show. Pretty cool. So this is a free event happening from now till 1 this afternoon. And uh, let's check out if there are any of these amazing Monarchs flying around. Okay, so they're going to probably be hard to spot at Brack because you have to have an actual pollinator garden. They love, of course, milkweed and any... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. native plants like Greg's Miss Flower. We have a bunch flying around outside right now. Yeah. Of, I even sent an email to the newsroom like, hey, if you want to see monarchs, uh -huh. check out our garden here at KSAT. It gives you a little <laughs> sense of peace. But you see they got their wings ready. Mm -hmm. Our KSAT photographer Alexis is there now. So this is live celebrating the beauty of the monarch butterfly, the importance of our pollinators. This event is produced by Blooming with Birdie in partnership with Brackenridge Park Conservancy. Promises to captivate and journey the realms of curiosity, compassion, and environmental consciousness. So basically, this is mm -hmm. a family-free event. You can see that I know Rainbow Gardens is out there. Um, there's a lot of plant giveaways. You can see that woman is carrying a tree there. So I know they have plant giveaways. They're going to be tagging monarchs as well. And basically, it's just to get that conversation going. It's important to plant native for our pollinators. Yes, girl, we see you. <laughs> and it's important some, like, to keep something. our ecosystems yeah. balanced. And you can learn about these things. That lady did not want to be on camera. She's like, hey, we're live. But this is a fun event, and it's, mm -hmm. you know, a beautiful day outside. Oh, yeah, absolutely, just yeah. To, like, even if you have know nothing about mm -hmm. butterflies, pollinators, take your kids out yeah. there. They have a lot of kiddo activities, but just a beautiful time to walk in Brack Park this morning. Yeah, they are incredibly interesting, just the, how they help the ecosystem and the journey here to San Antonio. Okay, time now is 939, 67 degrees outside. Oh, RJ, you should have talked about how you've actually been to Mexico yes. where they migrate. Macheros. Yeah, <gasps> I'm it is so unbelievable. Jealous. It's up there. Like wow. snowfall of monarchs. It's, oh, I cannot believe. That is amazing, RJ. Okay, also amazing. 67 degrees at 939. Sarah Spivey will have our forecast when we come back. Welcome back through discounts and doggy makeovers. Love that. <laughs> yes. A new partnership between the San Antonio Dog Groomers and the Boverde Hu Area Humane Society is giving new hope for pets waiting to be adopted. Love this story. KSAT producer MJ Inotch gives us an insight into how this helps new pet parents and the impact these heroes are making. Through longing eyes and metal latches to big hearts across the Alamo City. San Antonio groomers heard the Bolverde Area Humane Society's cries for help. They've offered to discount all of our adopters 20% on a groom at their facilities because we have a pretty extensive adoption packages with different things inside. We didn't have any 
grooming certificate. So I think it's going to be amazing. A lot of the dogs that come in are matted and kind of don't look their best. So we try to work with the shelter so we're able to um, you know, get them all nice and beautiful. Northside's For the Love of Dogs Pet Boutique and Grooming is hoping through this partnership, new furry friends at the Bulverde Area Humane Society will get a second chance. And I just did a dog named Scruffy and he freaking got adopted, I want to say like two or three weeks after I groomed him. We had a dog that was in pretty bad shape. His name was Scruffy. And I, w I was at the vet and um, she overheard me talking about that the dog needed grooming. So she asked me to come by, came by, they groomed the dog, you couldn't even tell the difference between them. You know, I mean, he looked, he looked so amazing. We wanna help him out and be able to get all the babies adopted because, you know, there's so many, so many that need loving homes. MJ Inach, KSAT 12 News. All right, good stuff there. San Antonio Pets Alive is asking for donations. If you take a look at your screen, check out what they need here. It's laundry detergent, hand and dish soap, paper towels, newspapers, very important, blankets, pig ears, training treats, and pint salt. If you can donate, you can ship or drop off supplies at their location there on Marbach Road. That's 9107 Marbach Road, Suite 109. Sarah, we are just giving a look at the Pollinator Festival in Brack Park. But there's a lot of other events happening this weekend, and we have been treated with such beautiful weather. Great Can't day. Wait. Yeah. Absolutely beautiful <laughs> outside. There's a chill in the air this morning for the first time in a long time in San Antonio. Our coolest we have been since June 6th, 123 days. Take a look at this beautiful sunrise over Helotus from earlier this morning. That's on our KSAT Connect feature on our weather app. And you can see that there are clouds out there, but temperatures are in the 60s all across San Antonio. 66 degrees in the Alamo City, 66 at JBSA Randolph, and yes, a little breezy with winds from the northeast at 15 miles per hour. Those winds are from the northeast because we had another cool front move through a reinforcing shot of cooler and drier air. It's 60 67 in Hondo, 63 in Kerrville, 67 in New Braunfels, and in Gonzales. Good morning in Yavaldi, where it's 68, 59 in Rock Springs. And yeah, we have those clouds out there that are going to be with us for most of the day. It is breezy, too. Winds are sustained from the northeast at 15 to 20 miles per hour, but we have seen gusts of up to 30 already this morning. Now, if you're not a fan of the wind gusts, they are going to come down. We are going to have less wind by this afternoon and evening, so that'll be good. Uh, and again, drier air pushing in from the north. This is all a part of a system that's bringing a lot of rain to New England today, but behind that system pulling in that cooler air from the north, working its way through San Antonio and South Central Texas. It's 77 in Brownsville, but 50 in Amarillo. That's a 27 degree temperature difference from the Panhandle to the Valley. And again, that drier air moving in from the north, so it's going to feel great today. Dew points are in the 40s right now, but they'll fall even more, potentially in the upper 30s by the end of the day. That's chapstick weather. Whenever dew points get down into the 30s, a little uncomfortably dry out there. So make sure to use a little extra chapstick today. 73 degrees around noon. It is going to be one of those days where you'll want to sit outside if you have any outdoor plans for lunches or things like that. Take that table outside because it's going to be gorgeous. A little breezy this morning, as I mentioned, but by the afternoon, dew points uh, are going to be low, so low humidity. Uh, the winds are going to come down and highs are going to be right near 80 degrees in San Antonio, although there's going to be plenty of areas that do not get out of the 70s today. And by this evening, temperatures falling into to near 70 degrees by 9 p.m. So look at forecast highs across South Central Texas in the San Antonio metro area. Only 73 in Kerrville, only 75 in Bernie, 78 in New Braunfels and Seguin, 78 in Divine, 78 in Floresville and 77 in Uvalde. Great evening for football out there. A lot of local high schools still kicking off this evening. Kick off 74 by halftime 70. Again, you might want a light sweater if the 60s bother you and you need a little light sweater for that. By tomorrow morning, you're definitely going to want a light jacket. 58 in San Antonio. Wake up early. Soak in that cool, crisp fall air. It's going to be 50 degrees in Kerrville and 59 in Del Rio. Take a look at the forecast. By tomorrow, again, 80 degrees, so nice way to round out the weekend. Tuesday, 81, but we do have a chance for some isolated rain on Tuesday. Humid by Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Thursday will be near 90, but before it can get too warm, a front moves through Thursday night into, into Friday morning. Oh, love it.
Absolutely, <laughs> especially with all the football taking place and a lot of people going to be hanging out outdoors, checking out those games. It's, it's going to be an awesome weekend. Yeah. Thank you, time. Sarah. All right, guys, 948 out there out right now. Sorry. <laughs> 67 it degrees. I will get that. Out there. <laughs> it is. We'll be right back. Some news with holiday shopping. Adobe Analytics predicts record-setting discounts. The company's holiday forecast expects online holiday sales to climb to almost 5% above last year. Shoppers could see up to 35% off toys, electronics, clothes. That's according to Adobe. Consumers will likely spend $221 billion online shopping this holiday season. All right, but if you're not ready just yet for that holiday shopping, then maybe you're ready for some Halloween candy. I'm always ready for Halloween candy, candy at any point. CandyStore.com released data based on its bulk candy sale to determine the favorite Halloween sweets in each state and the country. Reese's Peanut Butter Cups took the number one spot across the country. I agree with that. M&M's and Hot Tamales earned spots two and three. And the favorite Halloween candy in Texas, Sour Patch Kids. Mm. Okay. <laughs> yes. Hey, real quick, let's check in one last time with some pollinators that are surely enjoying this cooler weather. All right. Yeah, we've been following this uh, throughout the entire morning here. So this is the eighth annual Monarch Butterfly and Pollinator Festival. It's going on right now at Brackenridge Park. It's free and it goes on until 1 p.m. I'll be there after the show. Should be a lot of fun Should out be there. Fun. Yes, definitely. Okay, also happening today. You know what? This is a big day here because today and tomorrow is going to be the big Texas Comic Con. This is taking place at the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center. Some guests you might get to see include David Harbour from Stranger Things. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. yes. And yeah. Rose McGowan and so many more. Let's take a look. Well, good morning, RJ and Sarah. We're coming to you from the Henry B. Gonzalez Convention Center in downtown, waiting for day two of big Texas Comic Con. As you can see, the line is starting to grow and we've gotten a lot of people that are excited to come and see their favorite fans. And let's talk to this person right here. I can tell by your cosplay you're excited to meet somebody. Yep. Tell us about it. Uh, David Harbour, uh, who played the character Red Guardian, uh, is going to be here. I'm going to get his autograph. Awesome. T yep. Tell me about your cosplay. How long did uh, you think it put together? I actually just bought it on uh, online, actually. It was all from, uh, <laughs> from China, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Well, enjoy your day. Thank, Thank you, you so much. We got Red Mask here. Red Mask, tell us a little bit about yourself. What's your name? Uh, Tristan. Tristan, what are you excited about today? Uh, I'm just excited to see all the different cosplays that are going to be here. Um, I love seeing all the other cosplayers and just taking pictures and uh, the art that uh, I get to buy here and whatnot. I've got a huge collection. So, uh, Anybody excited you wanting to see? Uh, I'm trying to uh, maybe see uh, Johnny, who's a voice actor uh, for some of my favorite characters. Um, hopefully he'll be here again today. Cool. Oh, great. Well, enjoy your day. Thank, Thank you so you. much for talking to us. And as you can see, RJ and Sarah, the fans are excited. They're waiting to get in. They want to meet their favorite stars. They want to do some shopping. And we're hoping to bring you a complete wrap-up for tomorrow, Sunday morning, GMSA. As for now, Alex Turbino, KSAT 12 News. Back to you, RJ and Sarah. Hey, thank you, wow. Alex. So Alex is one of our video editors, very talented editors. And I know he's also out there with Timmy Stewart, one of our other editors. Thank you guys so much. Yeah. Uh, they're big Comic-Con people. Yes. Are you a Comic-Con person? I, I am, actually, yes. A big uh, Marvel guy. That's definitely something. So I recognize a lot of those characters out there. But uh, but Alex and Timmy, definitely like great guys, great guides out there to yes. show us what's going on Comic-Con. They're so into it. They're I into it. it. So I've covered Comic-Cons before, and it's always good to have a guide with you. you to be like, to. if you're not, if you're, I, I don't really know anything. So when it comes to Comic-Con stuff, yeah. so they, they are like, okay, that's their dress is so-and-so, and that's cosplay. a great cosplay. Yeah. And oh, we should get in line for this because yeah. this is a big star. Like, so you go with your Comic-Con gurus and you're set. Yeah, absolutely. Good times out there. Timmy and Alex just doing the Thank most. Thank you, guys. This Saturday morning. Okay, guys, it's 9.56 right now, 67 degrees. We'll be right back. All right, friendly reminder, even though the weather is absolutely wonderful, molds, unfortunately, are still very high out there. So if you're wheezing and sneezing, mold's the reason.
Take a look outside right now. It's 67 degrees and winds are from the north, gusting up to 25 miles per hour. Plenty of cloud cover out there, so temperatures are going to be slow to warm. By noon, we'll be at 73. Winds are going to come down in the afternoon, getting up to 80 degrees this afternoon for the high, but most of the day will be spent in the 60s and 70s. And then tonight, temperatures will fall after sunset. We'll be getting to the 60s by 10 p.m. So if you have late Saturday night plans, maybe grab that light jacket with you. You'll need a light jacket early tomorrow morning, 58 degrees, 80 for the high tomorrow. Another cool morning on Monday. Then we see humidity gradually return, a small chance for rain on Tuesday. We'll be warm by Thursday at 90, but that front arrives Thursday night into Friday. Hopefully clearing out mm -hmm. skies for the full annular ring of fire Can't solar wait. eclipse next Saturday. Remember, we're your eclipse authority. So excited for everything. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, RJ. Yeah, we'll thanks, guys. We'll be back tomorrow. Hey, Texas.